Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at a freshly released open source UI library called PCUI. And this one is for making front end specifically on tools and game tools, game engines, and it is in fact battle tested in a game engine you have, may have actually already worked with. That's what the PC stands for in PC UI. It's PC as in Play Canvas. What you see in front of you, this is Play Canvas. It is a web-based, yes, so if I go ahead and I hit F11 here, you will see we are in fact in my browser. Uh, but it's got a very Unity-like editing experience. The back end um, framework behind Play Canvas, by the way, is fully open sourced and you can basically use this to create games directly in your browser. And it's a lot like working in Unity or Godot or Unreal or any of these other environments. It just happens to be in your browser, which, you know, if you're working on something like a Chromebook or you want to work between your PC and your tablet or whatever, there's a lot of things to recommend towards HTML5 development. Anyways, back to today's words. We're looking at uh, PC UI, and that is the front end label or front end UI system that is powering all this. See these pop up menus? PC UI. These buttons down here, PC UIs. These uh, various different toggles, toggle switches, all of this stuff, everything you see here, all of this front end is being powered by PC UI. On top of that, so is the logic, the data binding, the stuff that makes basically when I click this, that happens, or when I enter something, this value here should change. That is also being handled by PC UI. It's implemented data binding and something called the observer pattern to make, you know, actually working with data to map to your front end UI a bit of a breeze. Now, another thing that was actually created using this guy is the Play Canvas. Uh, um, GLTF viewer. This is a GLTF viewer. This is an open source project. As you can see here, these toggle bars, sliders, and the fact that they actually do something when you click on them, all of this stuff is implemented using PC UI. If you want to see actually how it works, PC, uh, the Play Canvas viewer is uh, an open source project, so you can check out the source code for it. So for example, this one here, um, PC UI is a JavaScript library, but this one here is a TypeScript example. So you can see how the data binding works. So you can see how the observer set up, uh, what happens when you click on a slider, etc. All of the, the bindings between the TypeScript and uh, the back end provide or the front end uh, logic being provided by PC UI. You can see it in action in these code examples. So um, here is the announcement. This is from the Play Canvas blog. Again, Play Canvas is an excellent 3D engine if you are looking to work in the web. If I was going to work on a uh, HTML5 target first project, I would either be using Play Canvas or Babylon JS. One of those two for sure. Play Canvas has the better tooling. Babylon JS is fully open source. So it's a bit of a toss up for me, but I do recommend Play Canvas and I will link some uh, tutorials I've done that will kind of give you an idea of what Play Canvas is all about in the linked article down below, of course, with all the other links of what we're talking about today. So back to the PC UI release. It is a new open source front end framework for the web. It's designed with tool developers in mind. And also keep in mind, you can bundle this stuff into Electron apps. So you don't have to build stuff that runs on the web. You're just using web technologies to build your UI. And frankly, if you've done any UI development, such as uh, WinForms, which was pleasant, um, XAML, which was less pleasant, or Qt, which was yeah, you probably realize that doing web development or doing front end development really isn't that fun. So in some ways, using the web and this kind of technology, it starts to make a lot of sense in that regard. Uh, so again, it's powering the Play Canvas editor, which has been around for about five or six years. So it's very well uh, battle tested. It's also also powers the uh, GLTF viewer that we saw in action. And again, there is a link to the source code there. In terms of this project itself, there's a couple of really nice things. First off, the documentation is very solid. So everything you see here, all of the components that are available, everything is well documented with some really good examples. So you see here, we've got controllers or um, UI components such as uh, switch boxes or booleans, uh, buttons, codes, containers, dividers, info boxes, labels, numeric input, handlers, overlays, panels, progress bars, select input, slider input, spinners, text area input, text input, uh, tree view vector input, and so on. Well, actually, that's everything. Everything you look at here, it has an example you can see in action. You can see all the various different parameters that can be set. And of course, we can jump in and see the code behind it. At the same time, we can also come down here and see some data binding. As I mentioned, it sets up the observer pattern so you can see uh, some simple use cases. So for example, if I switch this hello world to goodbye, good bite 2020, and then boom, the label gets updated. So you can see the control here for binding between the two elements. So you've got your label, 
it binds uh, observer to element you link between the two and then one changes the other one is updated so that's kind of what the observer pattern is doing for you it's also possible to do two-way binding so you can see here if i do hello world and i add a two it will update it over here i change it back and it'll update over there so you can have two-way binding again the source code for doing this is really quite simple plus you can go back to that gltf viewer it was fully implemented in open source using typescript and the um, pc ui library so if you want to see a more you know, robust example in action, you can do so. Uh, on top of that, we've got a couple of UI examples, including a to-do list thing. This is kind of like the hello world of um, items of uh, web applications. So you can see it in action right here. And then there's also a history one. One of the nice things about this framework is it makes implementing uh, an undo and uh, redo or un undo redo stack really quite simple. So you can see how to do history on things. So if you want to undo or add undo in your particular tool, uh, that is another thing that um, PC UI is taking care of for you. So the nice thing here is if you're trying to create focused and simple, uh, you know, web-based tools, the things like what you're seeing here with this uh, Play Campus game engine uh, this could be a good choice for you and again it is completely free and open source there's also the sand the story box so you can go in here and see some things in action so for example the button here i can go here on canvas and see the button and the the results of the button or i can click here and go in and see the documentation so all of the various different examples that are available so say we want to see this tree view example right here and then if we want to we can um, go see canvas docs show code on it and so on. So it gives you the ability to kind of jump in, take a look at how everything works. The same thing here is the to-do list thing that we saw earlier on, uh, all available here. So definitely nicely documented, nice storybook there for kind of digging in and seeing what it's all about. As I mentioned off the hop, this is a completely open source project. Uh, can't really tell you how the activity is going to be because literally the last commit was, well, it was yesterday. It's under the MIT code license. MIT gives you um, pretty much whatever you want. You can do whatever you want with it. You just don't hold them responsible for anything. You can use it commercially in projects. Uh, you don't have to accredit back to them. Of course, it's always nice to do so. Uh, you can change the source code. You got to keep the license intact if you do so. But otherwise, it's it's a very liberal license in what it allows you to do. Very flexible. Basically, you can sell projects and you don't have to release your source code. So it is nice in that regard. It's a very flexible license and it works in most environments. Code is all available here. The source code itself is in JavaScript. So you come in here, you can see oh, they got a couple of the examples here as well. So that to-do list example is right here. But we can go back here. There's the components, all the various different components that are available here. For example, are implemented. It's a it's mostly JavaScript here code uh, that's behind this guy. Uh, but yeah, that that's kind of the idea here. Actually, you can see it's 87.8% JavaScript and 12.12% uh, SCSS. So uh, that is the PC UI user interface component library. This is ultimately, as I mentioned right off the hop, incredibly well battle tested in the Play Canvas engine, which has been under development for like five years. So if there are problems with it, they've been ironed out at this point in time. It is up on NPM right now. So if you want to get it as a package, you can do so using the Node Package Manager. Um, so that's out oh, there. That's about it. So here you can see this is Play Canvas. Again, a, a really impressive 3D browser-based uh, game engine. I, I've been a fan of it in the past. And what they've basically done is they've released PC UI, their front-end user interface used to make everything you see here and everything you see here work. So if you're working on your own game development tools using something like JavaScript or TypeScript, uh, this could be a really good choice for you. And under the MIT license, very flexible in how you use it. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.